To figure out the rate law for a reaction, we often use the method of initial rates. The reaction I, I'm going to demonstrate it along is this reaction here, where two uh, nitrogen monoxides, nitric oxide, uh, react with one oxygen molecule to give us two nitrogen dioxides. So, If the data does not just make it obvious what order it is, um, we have a mathematical way of deriving the order of the reaction. So we take our rate law. Yeah, there it is. So we take our, our rate law. So we write the rate law for this reaction. Rate equals a constant times the uh, nitric oxide raised to an exponent x times the oxygen raised to an exponent y. So we need to figure out what this x and y are. So we take that rate level for two different sets of concentrations, but um, with the stipulation that only one of the concentrations is changing at a time. So any additional reactants have to be held constant. So when we rate divide uh, one of these rate laws by another one in a different set of conditions, we'll have a ratio of rate one over rate two. And then the, the constant times metric X oxygen Y over itself. Well, the constant will cancel off. Any reactants that are held constant will cancel off. We we'll want to get down to where we only have one reaction and that changes. So that gives us this right now here. And we're just going to start to do some manipulation on it so we can bring this X out. So we're going to ratio, uh, raise to a power instead of the individual raise to the power and then ratio. So we can bring the X out. And then to get this X off the X, we're going to do a, a logarithm. So we do a natural logarithm of both sides of this reaction. So the log of rate one over rate two equals log. Uh, the ratio of concentrations raised up to x. One of the properties of logarithms is that uh, we can pull this x out in front of this log of the ratio of rates. Once we have um, the x by itself, we can divide this log out. So we're going to get x is the log of the log of the ratio of the rates divided by the log of the ratio of the concentrations, and that's the concentrations being held. As being allowed to change. So here, if we hold the um, oxygen constant, we do the ratio of nitric oxide, we'll get the exponent of nitric oxide. If we hold our nitric oxide constant and let the oxygen vary, we'll get the exponent of the oxygen. So that's the process that we're going to do. So we have a data set here for three reactions for this, uh, uh, three trials for this reaction. So we're given the uh, molarity, so square brackets mean molarity, we're given the molarity um, and the rate, uh, which is molarity per second. Uh, that's the unit that we'd like to have for our rate, just one molarity per second. So what we're going to do is find in this set uh, pairs that we can use. So we have a pair of auctions. 0.25, so trial one and two can get us the nitric oxide exponent. Then trial two and three, the nitric oxide is constant. So that will give us the um, ratio over here. So I'm circling this constant in these blue bins. So we're going to be doing this ratio, so the uh, two oxygens held constant, so we're going to use these two with a ratio of these two. Uh, for nitric oxide being held constant, we'll do um, a ratio of these two over the uh, ratio of these two. So we find what's constant. We're using the other one in our ratio of rates and concentrations. Um, 
So using this data, we pick our two sets. So for uh, nitric oxide, we want them to vary. The oxygen remain constant. So we're using file one and two. I just like to put the uh, larger value on top. Uh, so we're dealing with a ratio of greater than one. So our logs are always positive. Let's worry about dropping a negative somewhere along the way. So the ratio of the two rates over the two concentrations. And I'm just breaking them down. So I'm showing the ratios first, then a lot of the ratio, and then this final term comes out to be 1.95. And of course, we're expecting a whole number, so we round to two. And uh, there are uh, reasons why this doesn't necessarily give us a precise number. Uh, for look for oxygen, we want oxygen to vary when nitric oxide is constant. So we use triangles uh, two and three. And again, I like to put the bigger number on top of the ratios: 0 0.033 over 0 0.011 uh, versus 0 0.78 over 0.25. So that reduces down to a log of three, log of 3.2. We'll get our values, and that one comes out to get 0 0.965. Um, so our rate then is K times nitric oxide is two nitric oxide squared times oxygen to the first power. So that is our rate for this. But we still have one more thing in there, the K. Can we figure out the K of this? And now that we have a rate law, we go back to our data set. We have values for concentrations and rates. So we have everything except for K. So for each trial, we can solve this for K and figure out what the value of K is. So that will be up here. So three trials, write the right law, write plus k, no squared, o2 to the, the first power. We put in the rate and the two concentrations for each of the trials. And then we solve for k, dividing this high cross, and get that k is 0 0.5411, 0 0.5612, 0 0.5396. We average that. 0.5473. So this is the best number that we can provide uh, for our rate of constant. By uh, just using one would be uh, less precise than using them all and averaging it. We see the um, variation is on the second decimal place, the second significant digit. We only had two significant digits up here. And we uh, that means that we only have two down here. So we see that. Variation on that second digit that implies it is the significant digit. Uh, and then we also can verify things. So the actual final rate law is not written out. So let me um, so our final rate law. So it's a uh, rate equals 0.55 uh, molarity per second times uh, the nitric oxide molarity squared times the oxygen molarity. 